you think about me? What you think about me? So I'll repeat, so I'll repeat the confessions the of confession. your love for me. Now I breathe, I breathe the life of your word in me. So I never forget it. Say it with me. I believe. I believe what you think about me. It is amazing that sometimes you can receive the words that were spoken over your life that has nothing to do with who God said you are. You can believe the words of someone who said that you were a loser. You'll never be nothing. You're never going to get out of that situation. You're never going to be great. You're not. Have you ever received the never? I want to ask you that this morning. Have you ever received the never? That means someone said you're never going to love anyone like, yeah, I, I even had someone tell me, so ignorant, uh, you're never going to find anyone that's going to love you and those children. Have you ever had someone, had you believe the never? Why would you believe that? Have you ever had someone that you love, even if it's a relative, tell you, you're never going to be good enough? That's not what God said. Stop believing the never. Stop it. I am Pastor Jamila, pastor of the movement that you just logged on to. It's called the Car Chronicles Movement. So when you see hashtag CCM, that's what that acronym stands for. And people are crying this morning. Don't cry, but if you do, cry with faith. I am the pastor of Unity Church Charlotte, along with my wonderful husband, Apostle Fred D. Gooden III. And so we're excited when you see hashtag UCC. That is our church. It's so good to see you all. I want to give this beep this morning to this scripture that we're about to read and to the vein that I am petitioned to go in this morning. And so I want to say good morning to all of you. I want you guys to come on out tonight. It's about to go down. The prophetic prelude is going to be good tonight. Get your mask and wash your hands and worship. Follow the guidelines of the gatekeepers when you come into the sanctuaries. Yes, we will be going live. The prophetic prelude is going to be off the chain. My husband and I, along with the assistant pastor, Delivia Michelle, we will be giving you the prophetic prelude. That's right, the Sisters of Unity. And so I'm so glad to see my girl, Danielle. She is, <laughs> we laughed so much. We were laughing last week at about something. And she's just real and down to earth. And I really don't care to connect with people if they're not real and down to earth. I don't like the super deep because you can't reach the people because you must be relatable in this end time. And so, Danielle, I'm going to say thank God for her because she is coming. You got to hear her testimony. It is so amazing. I like to say happy birthday to all of you who are celebrating a birthday. Ruby, you're celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, Ruby. Thank God. It is fine. Look. Alicia, you're so crazy. It is Fire Friday, and the Holy Spirit is going to fall. Tonight at 7 o'clock, I need you guys to come to the sanctuary because we're going to have an amazing time tonight. Click tag and share and show this world that God is still building. He cares. All of these things that you think that God ain't doing in this season, He is doing exactly that for His people. I want to give this beep right here. That beep is for the brokenness. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I do such a thing? That beep is for brokenness. If you don't believe me, let's go to the word of God. Listen, I want everybody to tag someone. Maybe tag about one or two people right now. Can you do that? Do that for me. I want to say congratulations to my nephew who will be on his way. Um, oh my gosh. Wow. As I sit here, I'm saying congratulations to my nephew who's on his way to uh, Miami to school. and He'll be heading off and so many wonderful things happening all of the children who are going to be um sending their kids off to school we're praying but someone just got in my inbox with a testimony praise the lord good morning woman of god a praise report today i will be accepting a stem scholarship for my daughter valued over fifteen thousand dollars she's still in spain and leaves for london next week there will be 
a pre-med student in biomedical engineer. And so thank you for your prayers and sowing your seed for her last year. And of course, the harvest manifested. Remember, she wants to be a surgeon and combined with robotics. That is amazing. I love to see that our children are making it. If you ain't praying for your children, shame on you. You cannot be that selfish until the only blessing you want is on your life and not on your children. And so shame on you. You best to understand that God is doing a new thing in the earth. And even though we're living in the last days, he is still on the throne. I'm seeding for brokenness. I'm going to do that because God has me in a vein. And I want you guys to click tag and share because we're going in a vein. We're going to Ezekiel 36. Can you do that? Can you get your coffees? Can you get your tea and give me? Where's my honey? Hello, husband, 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 husband. I think he went up the timeline really quickly. Sunday, come on out. My sister. That's right. Apostle Dr. Kenya J. Miller. She will be in the house because we're going to continue the prophetic prelude. And so come on out. You got to worry about your soul. Get your soul right. Because we're living in the last days. Listen to me. Let's go. Uh, Narkita Martin. Well, happy birthday to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, Ezekiel 36. Can you do that? Let me read for you. Get your coffee, teas, and get me. For I will. Now, the Holy Spirit is talking. What's up, Dawn? The Holy Spirit is speaking here. And even though this, this word is for all of us, because we are descendants of Abraham, believe it or not, please understand. Yes, I thank you for that, um, Angela. I got you. I, I want you guys to understand that we are the descendants of Abraham, the Israelites, the, the Cushite. That word means Cush, black. And so understand everyone that's under the sound of my voice, no matter what ethnic background you are in, I want you to understand that you are part of the GNI. Look at me. The genetics and the makeup of this scripture. So please pay attention. Hey, my husband. Hey, baby. Listen, for I will take you out of nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. And so understand we are speaking of all of us. Understand this uh, scripture really pertains to the scattering of, 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 of Jerusalem, the scattering of Israel, the scattering of the people of God. And God says what's going to happen is I'm going to bring them back. God bless you to all of the men who are on here and God's been on deck. And so what he's saying is something is happening. It's the great gathering now. And this is where we are. He says, I'm I'm going to gather them from all corners of the earth and bring them back. I will sprinkle clean water on you mm -hmm. and you will be clean. I'm going to cleanse you from all your impurities, all of your impurities from all of the idols and all of the things that you used to do. He said, I'm going to gather you, clean you up and I will give you a new heart. Everyone who's under the sound of my voice. I need you to put a heart emoji up. Jesse Cook, bless you. I need you to put a heart emoji up. Please, Yolanda Jones uh, Gardner, God bless you. Heart emojis because we're going to a vein this morning. Cynthia Brides Pitt, God bless you. We're going in a vein. I need all of the hearts. God says, what I'm going to do, I'm about to give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove you and your heart of stone. Everyone who is under the sound of my voice, your beautiful heart with the chambers that were pumping all type of blood. You were soft hearted for folks. Now, so many things has happened to you until you now have a heart of stone. He says, what I'm going to do is because of that, Michelle Johnson, you so crazy. Because of that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove your stony heart. Whatever situation got you there, you best to hold on. God says, what I'm about to do, I'm going to remove your stone of heart and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. Yet again, 2,000 people under the sound of my voice, Ezekiel 36, 24, 36. And God says, I'm going to give you a stone heart. No, I'm going to take that away that the world gave you and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. He says, I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decree. And be careful of the law you keep after I do this. Then you will be living in a land that I gave your ancestors. Hold on, wait a minute. I know y'all saying ancestors, ooh, we don't want to go back there. Hold on now. God is doing something and he's doing something great. Don't judge it before you hear what I'm saying. You will be my people and I'm going to be your God because some of you turn your back on him. He said, but you about to be back. Listen, he wants to speak to the, the backslider. The word of God says that I'm married to the backslider. If you are a backslider, 
backslider and you are under the sound of my voice, a broken backslider, go on and give God your tears because he says, I'm going to reconcile with you because you never should have left me in the first place. Listen, he says, I'm going to save you from all of your uncleansedness. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to call you from the grain mm -hmm. and make it plentiful. And I'm going to bring, I listen to me. Okay, so this is you. If you are backsliding, you're crying, and you're under the sound of my voice, just say with me, Father, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe you rose from the dead, and you're sitting on the right side, interceding on my behalf. Come into my life. Make me clean. Right there. Come on back. Because he said he's married to you. You couldn't get away if you tried. He said, I'm married to the backslider. Not a marriage that you had that y'all ain't making. He says, I'm married to you. For eternity, Vicky Walker, hear me. He says, now I'm gonna I'm gonna take all of your uncleanliness. He says, I'm gonna call you from the grain. If anyone knows what grain is, you know you in a good way. Two thousand two hundred people under the sound of my voice. He said, I ain't gonna even bring famine upon you, meaning I'm not gonna even give you what you're supposed to get. Mm. God's grace and mercy is sufficient. You wish folks had mercy on you, but God does. He says, I'm not gonna even give you what you deserve. He said, I'm gonna do this to you, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the fruit of the tree and the crops of the field so that you will no longer suffer disgrace hear me it's funny because most folks want stuff but you don't want to disgrace yourself to get it it means i'm desperate no baby let me check yourself before you wreck yourself i'm only desperate for the most high god mm -hmm. i'm desperate for my husband because i love it enough him but i'm desperate to the point where i can't live without god i cannot live without that man it is the only man that i only want my husband to be in love with amen don't judge me. I'm just saying. And God is saying because of this, he says, I'm going to increase the fruit of your spirit and your crops and your fields. And you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nation because of all of this famine. Y'all, you may not like it or not. But right now, oh, we's in a famine. You best to get up and go to the nearest grocery store and guarantee you. Y'all don't understand. I'm going to say this and please go out and vote. A lot of people don't understand that uh, somebody is attacking China and everything that we have. If you turn it under the bottom, it says made in what? China. Why would you want to trade with us? Forgetting that there was a level of them that pulled the deficit from up under us. No, no politics. And so now you don't think there's going to be a bit of a famine? Hold on. Now, wait a minute. Y'all best to vote. A famine? Yes, God says. There's a famine in the land that nothing shall come nigh thee. Because we're about to be reconciled from all of this brokenness. And then, someone say then, then you will remember your evil ways and your wicked deeds. And you will loathe yourself from sins and disdainable practice, meaning stuff that's vile. Hmm? Disdainable practice is meaning the abomination that God says, I don't like that. He's saying, now what I've got to do, I've got to break you down and build you up. He said, I want you to know that I am not doing this for your sake, declares the sovereign Lord. Be ashamed because he said, I'm going to give you double for your shame. Crystal, I love you. How are you? Nancy Williams, God bless you. He said, I'm going to give you double for your shame, double for your disgrace. Uh -huh. That's why I don't mind when folks, you know, I don't mind being, I don't mind none of that stuff. Because every time I'm put in a place of shame and pity and disgrace, uh, God bless me right in my enemy's face. The sovereign Lord says, be not ashamed. Don't be disgraced. Don't be disgraced for your conduct, people of Israel. He said, this is the sovereign Lord. That sovereign Lord says, one day, I'm going to clean you of all of your sins. And this is where it gets good. He says, I will, listen, resettle your towns. Okay, y'all don't get it. I'm going to resettle your towns. That means towns and areas that are impoverished. Towns and areas that are debauchously in turmoil. T listen, he says, I'm going to rebuild it. And reestablish it. The desolation of the land, the cultivatingness, listen, cultivating the farms, the grain, everything that's the crops are just ruined. I read with a farmer, he lost 
$200,000 a month in revenue because of agriculture. And so everyone that's under the sound of my voice, if you have commodity stocks, you need to go on and jump up and down. He said, the desolating of this land, he says, I'm going to cultivate it. Instead of lying desolate in a site who passed through it. That means that all of the people under the sound of my voice and your crops ain't growing. Hmm? Never mind if you sow the seed or not, it ain't growing. Just hold on. God says, stay right there. He says, what I'm doing is I'm cultivating the ground for you to gather. Remember, the gathering has started. He said that everybody that walked by would be like, poor little tank tank. See, people are looking at you now in your state and they feel sorry for you. That's what he's saying. How rock house bless you. That's what he's saying, Cheryl Walker. He's saying people are looking at you in your state and saying, man, that's messed up. Click tag and share. It's about the good, good, good. They will say, this is the land that I was laid waste. Has it become like the Garden of Eden? The critics, all of the people that are lying, they're looking at it and they're saying, this is never going to recover. It's in ruins. This You're never going to recover from COVID. You're never going to recover from losing your job. You will never recover. You got to be careful when you're going through something. Don't take people's words that say that you will never recover because God's about to show you, yes, I am. God is saying they are lying ruins, desolate and destroyed. They're now going to be fortified and they're going to be inhabitants. This is the nation and the nation around you. They will remain and they will know that I am the Lord. This is where good, good. I have rebuilt what was destroyed and have replanted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. I know you ain't got a lot of Bible readers on here, but I love to read the word. But if you please will click, tag and share and tell someone it is time to rebuild after your brokenness. Mm -hmm. Say it with me, please. Now, those in the back, it is time to rebuild uh -huh, after your brokenness. It's funny because people look at brokenness like it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But have you ever thought that God put you in this position? Mm -hmm. Have you ever decided in your life? time that I will be here scrounging for bread. I, I got God said I never see the righteous forsaken I, nor his seed begging bread I, but it seemed because of COVID I, all of us have gotten here a time or two. I, go on and click tag and share I, but y'all cry but cry with faith because God said what's about to happen. I, I'm about to rebuild you after brokenness. I, see I've got my husband on here I, and I've got to talk about him for a bit. He can build anything from the ground up. God knows the man is good with his hands. Focus, focus, focus. There is a process of building and God began to take me to it. Most people don't understand when God builds, he's got to break down. He's got to break down because you decided you was going to do it your way. But God said, that ain't the way I need you to build. I need you to follow my instructions. Most of us didn't build the right way. Huh? Ah, it's going to get good. Y'all better rattle your keys because huh? home ownership is definitely on the rise. Huh? You ask God for a home. Huh? You credit mm, not so much, huh? but God said I know you went through something. Huh? Now it's time to turn the key. Huh? God said what I'm doing is huh? I'm breaking down the land for you. Huh? I'm breaking down the land and the possibilities for you to be a homeowner. Huh? All the possibilities are going to be endless huh? if you trust me huh? during the broken period of your your time. I've got to do this because my husband is a great builder, might I add. There is a process that God brought to my attention, honey. He brought it to me while I was trying to beat my face. He said, now write down the preparation period of the building process. There is something called land preparation. That's the first order of it. The second is foundation. That's the second order of it. The framing is where ah, it kind of looks like you're going to make it, but you might have to break it down just a little bit more. 2,700 folks uh, under the sound of the prophetic voice of God. Uh, the plumbing and the electric uh, and the havoc part of it. Uh, uh, that seems to be
be good because uh, the wind is going to blow you in the right direction uh, and water shall flow. Uh, there is something called the installation. Uh, you got to pat it down. Uh, for everything that you put in, uh, it shall stick. Wait a minute. Um, there is something now called the drywall. Uh, the drywall is where um, you put up walls. Uh, some of you are blocking folks out uh, when God said right now uh, it's going to be a season where you let them in. Uh, hear me. Uh, there is something called uh, the interior. Uh, uh, the interior finish is. Uh, it may look okay, TT, uh, but hold on, hold on. Uh, it's about to get real good. Uh, the exterior finish, uh, that's where you got to pay attention to. Because uh, it look like you got it all together. Uh, but inside, are uh, uh, you a whole mess. Uh, hold on, don't go nowhere. Uh, the exterior finish is where uh, folks look around and say, uh, Oh, you look good, uh, but inside you're broken. Ah, uh, uh, listen to me, Miss Weaver. I ain't even done yet. Uh, but God said, uh, but oh God, uh, suppose I told you. Uh, you wasn't built right. Uh, we was built sugar, uh, but we wasn't built to break. Uh, God said, what I'm doing in this season, I'm, I'm going to restore you and rebuild you after brokenness. Uh, if you've ever seen somebody uh, that comes in after the finished product uh, and they look at the house, uh, they look at the structure, uh, they start the inspection um, to see was it done right. Hold on. Um, somebody ain't got the money for the closing. Hold on. You ain't going to even need half of that. Uh, God said, what I'm doing is... Uh, I'm rebuilding you after the broken process. I've got to go here because y'all don't know why I'm here. You go ahead and click tag and share because a broken hearted person needs to hear this. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to be a homeowner and it gets a little hard. God said, hold on. Didn't I tell you if I told you to build it, I've got to provide for you. Hold on because you don't get where I'm going. Nobody builds nothing and not count up the cost. You don't believe me? Read the word of God. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Luke 14, uh, which of you uh, decides you're going to build something uh, and not even know the expense and what you got? Uh, hold on. What's up, girl? How you doing, TT? Uh, God said, hold on. Uh, go on and shake your keys. Uh, God said, I got something for you, uh, but I got to break things down for the simplest compound uh, so that you can receive. Uh, see, God told me this morning, um, I've got to build something uh, out of brokenness, uh, and they feel like uh, I sent the brokenness. Uh, to break them down. No. Uh, he said nobody builds something uh, without scattering the land. Now watch this. Uh, you build something uh, and you was not aware uh, that the person that you quote unquote supposed to build with uh, uh, God, uh, was not the best person for you. Uh, you went in a business with them. Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. It's going to get good. Share. Uh, you let them move in your house. Uh, can I get real transparent, Bishop Wesley? Okay, hold on. Let me get real transparent. You let some... Okay, y'all crying. Oh, God, they cry, baby. Fred, you got my back right, honey. You let folks move in your house. God brought me here. I said, now, God, why you have me here? I'm good, my husband and I. He said, no, I want you to talk to the people of God. I said, okay. See, y'all don't understand. God said the house he's talking about. God, people understand the brick house. But what if I told you about your fleshly house? Uh, the house that I want to live in. Um, have you ever had somebody uh, move in your house? Uh, Y'all cry? Okay, come on now. Uh, go on, shake the keys, keys, keys. Uh, have you ever had somebody uh, move in your house uh, and you just waiting for the day for them to move out? Uh, you've given them a deadline. Uh, perhaps your good grown kids. Uh, Y'all ladies better be careful because it's getting cold outside hmm? and hobo season is approaching. Huh? Hobo is that man that ain't got nowhere to stay but he get involved with you because he ain't got nowhere else to go. What happened to me? I'm good now. I'm good. That shade. Okay, that's fine. Y'all don't understand that God said, what if I told you your fleshly house is not fit for me to live in? Well, they don't like me. They, they don't like me. Okay. Okay. Y'all don't like me. Well, let me tell you the truth. God said, what I've got to do. He said, I got to live there so you can follow my instructions. Y'all don't believe me. Hold on. Y'all better go to the scripture because his son that was hanging on the cross. He said, Father, have you forgotten about me? Father, have you forsaken me? It's not that God forsook his only son. It simply means he took on the sins of the world, which made him impossible to look at. I'm not go sure. And God said, I build the house uh, for me to dwell in uh, but they have contaminated with stuff God knows uh, so what I've got to do uh, I've got to break down the house uh, and rebuild it uh, so I can live there uh, God, uh, some of you all oh, you sinners uh, God throw me under the bus it's okay uh, some of you God said I'm trying to live there uh, but you got too many occupations
repent. It means this. You still holding soul ties. I want to live there, but I can't live there with bitterness. I want to live there, but I cannot live there with unforgiveness. I want to live there, but you got too many bodies up in there. God knows. I want to live there, but you don't understand the iniquities. Oh God. Lord, I want to live there, but God knows your eyes are wide shut. Your windows ain't clean because of the moat. God said, I'm trying to live there. Oh God, I God. Okay, wait. Y'all crying. Y'all crying. Y'all don't understand. Have you ever had somebody come into your house uninvited? You ain't gonna be no uninvited. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on, come on. See, God said, I gotta break you down because you got uninvited guests. Yes, some of you are possessed. Some of you are oppressed. But some of you, you just in a mess. Most of you don't understand. You still holding on. Oh God, people from your past. You won't let them go. They're just occupying space. Rent in your mind, huh? occupying your heart, huh? and God said, I'm trying to live there, baby. Huh? So, oh, huh? what I've got to do, I've got to break you down. God said, It's the breaking this huh? that I've got to put into you huh? to rebuild you the right way. Huh? Oh, God, have you ever had somebody? Huh? Y'all crying? Come on, cry with faith. Huh? Have you ever had somebody? Huh? Go tag it, share. Huh? Come to your house on a what? What you doing here? You oh, you get surprised. Huh? I didn't know you was coming. Huh? Whether well, you got somebody in your bed or not. I didn't know you was coming. Huh? Have you ever had somebody huh, live in your house? Huh? Just a little bit. Y'all better know your rights. Huh? They got shot of a fire. Huh? God said, I got to break you down. Because huh? you got somebody in there huh, who's exercising their squatter's rights. Huh? The squatter's rights is this. Huh? It simply means... Huh, I ain't going nowhere. That I had them. What y'all laughing at? This is true. I'm, 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 I'm speaking fast. Have you ever had somebody say, huh? Let me lay with. Hold on. Okay, y'all cry. Come okay, on, watch out. Come on. I'm gonna stay with you for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. Hey, Barbara M. Owens, how you doing? But child, let me tell you something. That them had they mail for it to you. Now you gotta go down to the court in your good old suit and your good old dress. Sharita, what's up, girl? And you got. To go down there and say, huh? they are squatting here. Huh? They won't leave. I huh? to go share huh? strongholds. Huh? You got to go. Huh? You've been exercising huh? your squatters' rights. Huh? And I'm trying to build something. Huh? And every time I build, huh, the foundation breaks huh? because you're allowing huh, soul ties huh? to exercise huh? their squatters' rights. If you don't get up out of here, for I bust your head in the name of the Lord. They're exercising their squatters rights and uh, they're squatting. That means uh, they ain't going nowhere. Uh, yokes shall break today. Uh, so God says I've got to allow uh, the breakdown process uh, to get the squatter out of your spirit. Uh, Y'all don't like me today. It's okay. Uh, oh God, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. The word of the Lord came to me and he said they don't understand. Uh, you've got to scout the land uh, and lay the land. Uh, most so you got in stuff huh, and you did not exercise huh, the land. Where am I going? Huh? God said you don't go nowhere huh, unless I give you the authority huh, to move there. Huh? Some of you are about to relocate huh, into regions that God said. Huh? I ain't never tell you to move there anyway. Huh? But you got there because huh, you were in your feelings and move. Huh? And God says no. Huh? To build a proper house, huh, you got to scout the land. Huh? Scout the territory. Huh? Why are you going there? Huh? Who you going there with? Huh? But God said, now that you in the trouble, huh? that you went somewhere that I did not ordain, huh? I got to break you down and rebuild you. Huh? The foundation of it all is, huh? what are you building your house on? Huh? Where's Peter in this? Huh? He said it in the word of God in Matthew 16. Huh? He said, upon this rock, huh? I build my house huh? and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Huh? What is your foundation? Huh? What did you build it on in the first place? Huh? Some of you don't build your foundation huh? on sinking sand. Huh? And God says, that's why you're sinking, huh? Because you build on a foundation that had a crack in it, huh? Some of you done got involved, huh? Somebody said, I'm preaching the whole truth, huh? With an old crack rock, huh? No, not your mama old crack rock, not that song, huh? I'm talking about people, huh? That ain't financially stable, no, huh? I'm talking about some spiritual nuts, huh? You don't build a foundation, huh? On a whole lot of deep folks, huh? Anything that too deep, huh? You can't get a proper foundation, huh? How about if I told you, huh? You don't build your house with a nutcase. Huh? His narcissistic personality disorder. Huh? PTS, baby. Huh? Oh, 
loud child God uh, the worst person you could share a house with uh, with somebody that's mentally incompetent uh, they ain't got emotional intelligence uh, they ain't stable child uh, have you ever lived with somebody unstable child I know I did I got free in the name of the Lord God said, how do you build your foundation with a crack in it? How do you build your foundation with somebody that cannot agree with you? You can't build if both you don't agree. And let see of what we build on. Y'all are unequally yoked. It got a crack in the foundation. Fred, ain't we good? Bam. Y'all don't understand that the proper way to build, God said, you didn't do it. So I got to break you down. That's why you're in the season of brokenness. So I can rebuild you huh? The framing work of it all huh? 3,100 folks are the sound of my voice huh? The framing work is huh? I'm going to put something on top of it huh? What are you putting on top of your foundation huh? Have you built it the right way huh? You look good huh? But are you standing tall huh? God said now nah, because huh? You may look the part But inside you a mess huh? I've got to break you down And rebuild you huh? The plumbing and the electrical huh? God, God said it's the anointing that breaks yoke huh? And you just got a spark huh? You look good huh? But there ain't no spark there You build on something And the battery is dead You're building on something And there's no life in it Why would you build a lifeless house Really God Okay Why would you be in something And you're not living anymore Why would you build something On somebody That ain't got no time for you Why oh why Would you allow somebody To coexist with you When you are just existing You no longer smile You ain't got no joy because the joy of the Lord it was your strength and they took that too. Why would you build a house? Your water is not flowing. Only water that's flowing is your tear. You don't understand that God said I am the spring and if you drink of me you shall never drink again. God the havoc the wind that is blowing in your life it used to blow. You used to look like Beyonce in one of them videos. Your hair used to blow. Stand up. Oh child I'm good. Why would you build something on brokenness uh, that took the very wind out of you. Uh, Y'all don't understand the building process uh, because God said what I've got to do, uh, I've got to break you down uh, and rebuild you up. Uh, that's why I've got you there. Watch this. Uh, the Bible said, uh, God, please, please, please uh, pay attention to me. Uh, he said, I'm going to break down uh, and rebuild you. Uh, read Ezekiel. Uh, the word of God said to me, uh, it's the installation uh, what holds it all together. Uh, the Bible said, uh, put on the whole armor of God uh, so you can withstand the wiles of the enemy and most of you are weak because you did not understand the wow what is the wow the wow was that wow factor the surprise attack on your house see you know oh god oh god I'm praying for Will Smith that a surprise attack you let somebody in and you should have just did this you should have shut the door God said I've got to break you down so I can rebuild so whenever an enemy is knocking at your door you would know the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The breaking is God said, I've allowed it so I can build you up. I'm hurrying y'all. It's the exterior God and the interior the inward part of your heart. The fruits of the spirit in Galatians 5. It's what goes in the house that defiles it's not what goes into the house that defiles him but it's what's come out. Whatever comes out of you you built it and put it in the house God said because you didn't put in the right stuff. The house is all shattered and God is saying, I've got to break you down so I can rebuild you. Now the outward exterior, you look the part. Y'all are crying, but cry with faith. 3,200 folks under the sound of my voice. God is saying, it looks, it looks like I'm into religion. No, I'm into relationship, my husband and I. I don't want to look like a believer. I don't want to speak like a believer. I want my fruit to bear witness. I want when you walk by my house, my spiritual house, it's all right. Hold on. Y'all get too deep with all this stuff. See, I don't like deep folks because as I was driving yesterday, I said to my husband, I said, folks, is judging folks in this season where they should not because the changing of the gods have begun and the church is now going to look 
differently. Uh, oh, deep religious churches ain't gonna make it uh, because folks ain't looking for deep uh, and never gonna show uh, they're looking for real. Uh, and God said to me, uh, folks is judging folks with tattoos uh, and nose piercing, uh, bald headed chicks. Uh, most of us are bald headed under these wigs, anyhow. Uh, uh, God, you're looking at folks, uh, you're judging them, uh, you're saying they gotta have big hats. Uh, Y'all, they, 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 they ain't gonna like me today. Go and tag and share. Huh? You're saying they skirts gotta be down. Huh? You're saying they can't wear no makeup or eyelashes. Huh? You're saying all the stuff. And I said, huh? render your heart and not your garments. Huh? I already ripped the veil. Why you still behind it? Huh? God said to me, huh? y'all don't even understand. Huh? My forerunner huh? was a madman. Huh? My forerunner huh? didn't even look the part. Huh? The forerunner said, huh? what you talking about? Huh? I'm out here naked. Huh? I'm gonna see, huh? Eating roaches and honey. Huh? The God that's coming. I ain't even worthy enough to tie his shoes. But you judging me because I ain't got none. God said my forerunner was a madman. Y'all looking at the exterior when God says they ain't going to even matter. You ain't taking no big hats to heaven. Nor are you taking anything corset cords. Okay, my husband is jumping up and down, but it's okay. The word of the Lord spoke to me in 1 Peter 2 and 4 and 8. He said, it is the spiritual house that I've got to break down. And once I break down the spiritual house, allow me to rebuild it and give you a clean heart, renew in you a right spirit. And that's the reason for the brokenness. He said, it is time to rebuild after your brokenness. He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make you over again. Psalms 127 and 1. Unless the the Lord uh, builds a house uh, you are building in vain uh, uh, God unless the Lord uh, sends the watchmen to the city uh, you are staying watch in vain uh, hear me uh, listen to me uh, listen to me uh, God is saying now uh, when I rebuild you uh, I shall be the watchman uh, now when I rebuild you uh, I'm gonna build the house uh, now when I rebuild you uh, it ain't gonna be in vain uh, let me say this to all of you Huh? who are about to be homeowners, huh? who are about to go into closing. Huh? When God gives you a vision, huh? he provides provision. Huh? And look at she, huh? He ain't tell Noah, huh? build a knock huh? without providing. Huh? And God shall provide. Huh? Hear me. Huh? He even said it in the word of God, if you need it, huh? I will give you houses you did not build. Huh? God, suppose he told you, huh? go and get the keys, keys, keys. Huh? But suppose he told you, huh? you're about to be. Huh? I got my invited gifts because huh? I'm coming in. Huh? Listen to me. Huh? Some of y'all need to just throw some folks out your house. Did I say? Yeah, I'm going to say it. With 3,200 people tagging and sharing. Huh? Hear me. Huh? God said, huh? go on, 3,200 folks. Huh? Throw them out your house. Hold on. Huh? Oh, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on now. Hold on. You ain't going to make me and Fred responsible for you slamming the doors. Well, I did that too. I remember throwing, I'm, I'm real transparent. I remember throwing a joker out of my house. Huh? Now, I done told, hold on now. Where are you ladies at? Come closer. Those that need to hear it. Brothers too. Now, I done told you. I'm going to tell you one time. Everything you do. Hold on. Now, wait, 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 wait. I remember throwing the joker out of my house. I said, you got five minutes to get your shit em. Shit em. You know the word shit em. It's not shit em that y'all know. Shit em is in the Bible. Because you got to get out of my house. See, most of you, you've moved folks in your natural house, and that's why your spiritual house is jacked up. They don't like me. Shit them is in the Bible. Michelle preached it. Don't judge me. You, you, you don't understand. Y'all laughing at me, but it's okay. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't move folks in your natural house, and that's why your spiritual one is shot up. And God said, I'm going to rebuild you. Have you ever thrown somebody out your house? It's, okay, my girl Tanika Johnson, that's my girl from 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 Brooklyn over here. She said, I did. I ain't by myself. If you've ever thrown somebody out your house, just give an angry face. So I won't feel like I'm on here by myself. If you've ever thrown anybody out your house, give an angry face. So people won't think I'm on here by myself. Okay. And so, okay. <laughs> You got to go. Have you ever been so tired until you... Okay, I ain't by myself. See, the late people, the replay people, and those of you online, have you ever... Okay, 
Shane said, this is real, real good. See, right now, these people and I agree that we have thrown people out of our house. And so, whether you got grown folks in your house, 3,300 people could tag and share. Miosha Red Smith, I love you too. You got grown folks and they don't want to pay rent, but they run your house. It's time for you to go. If you have people, have you ever moved somebody in and all their kids and you just say, Lord, I used to have a quiet house. If you this woman came to my church and she said, I was trying to help this woman. And she moved not just her in, she moved her whole family in my house. And now, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I said, give me your address. I'm very good at throwing folks out of stuff that come to destroy it. And now everybody under the sound of my voice, I got 3,300 people who has thrown people out of the house. Fred and I will even throw you out the church if you come in and you try to ruin the house. Most pastors, you need to get on board. And so you've got to understand that God said, you move folks in your natural house. That's why your spiritual house is shot. You don't move folks in your house that don't respect the value of your work. Meaning this, you move folks in your house and you didn't understand that they were sent to kill still and destroyed. And that's why God said, I've got to break it down. Huh? See, most of you, huh, you can't get folks out your house huh, unless God breaks it down. Huh? Because then you get a new address huh? and you can't take them with you. Huh? Because they're exercising huh? their spiders, right? Huh? God said, i got to break down your heart huh? and build it back up huh? and present to you a fleshly one. Huh? Because you let folks move in your heart. Huh? And now your heart, your good old heart huh? that was beeping and thriving blood, huh? that was beeping and thriving happy, happy, joy, joy. Uh, cakes and pies kind of happy uh, now turn to stone uh, 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 but God said what I've got to do uh, I've got to break down the stony heart uh, and present to you a new one uh, that's why he said uh, I am presenting this brokenness uh, so I can rebuild and God said what you're going to do you got to allow me to break you down and rebuild you up the right way and God said watch me work he said the hammer is in my hand and I'm breaking down to real build some things up God said to me he blew my mind husband when he said it's the rebuilding process that people have a problem with he said it is the building process that people don't understand that some brokenness is coming to bless you some brokenness is coming to bless you. You got to be careful when you ask God for something. Because sometimes to get it to you, he has to break it down. See, understand that God says this is the season of real estate. And God says they don't even understand that I broke down a nation to bless some people. God said, I'm rebuilding. That's why some people are in this because you made bad decisions. So now it's time to rebuild. It's time to love again. If I allow brokenness to put me in a place of constraint, how could I receive and build with the greatest man that ever walked in my life? How am I able to look at the friends that are around me that saying, you know what? God is rebuilding us. There are some relationships that God's going to rebuild. Last week, I had to send my condolences to a young lady that the Lord prophetically had me speak over. Because now she is burying a person that was in her life, that broker that she still desired. And God says, now, this is going to hurt. There shall be no reconciliation. And then she went home to Columbia and got a phone call that he was dead. See, God won't allow you reconciliation. If he's trying to take you to a direction of rebuilding. Some of you need to just relax and let the father work. Let the master build the work. He says, now after COVID, he said, what you're going to do is you're going to rebuild. And so I'm going to lay down everything. He said, allow me to come into your life. So I can help you with the rebuilding process because it's uncomfortable. Before you relocate, let them in. Before you see a house and scout the house, let them in. Before you lay a foundation, let them in. Before you go look at a house, sit at a realtor. I got a woman yesterday that called me and said she was looking to buy a house. And she said a realtor knocked on her door 
and started talking to her about home ownership and they're about to move into their new house. Your house now has been broken. Your heart is broken. Your doctor's report is broken you down mentally, spiritually, and financially. And God said, trust me, even in that. There are people you, you y'all cry. Okay, come on, we're going we to hurry up. There are people you resorted back to alcoholism. You were smoking, you're back to weed smoking and cigarette smoking because this whole rebuilding the nation is getting on your nerves. And God says, hold on, I'm calling the world back from the four corners of the earth. The wind is blowing. The installation is now going inside of the bodies that rejected me from coming in, dwelling with them. And God says, what I'm doing now, he said, invite me in your house. There's some people, they can never come to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, hell no. Them, they kids. Oh, no. You know Thanksgiving is coming. It's real. I'm a real pastor, my husband and I. We're realists. Oh, oh, no. They can't. You got, you, you got a list of people that cannot come to your house. You can't come to my house. Your kids jump on my furniture. Why you ain't tell me Mikey was jumping on the couch? And he jumping on your couch and, you know, you got people, you, you, know, you can't use my car. Last time you brought my car back, you ain't put no gas in it. You got people, you be like, no, you are unwanted. You got a house. I got an unwanted guest. Child, they like roaches. They just come up in your house, eat up all your food. Child, they climb all over. You no good one. You got, no. You got some relatives. You just see them. You just, right? You don't even want them to come to your house. And God says, well, what about letting me come to your house? Some of you had to go stop. This nation thrown. Listen, this nation threw God out the house. And now you want to pray because school. What? If y'all the most bipolar saints I ever seen in my whole creation. And God says, listen, let me back in your house. Some of you, you don't need to let that joker move in your house. I love your daughter and your daughter might love me. But your daughter don't need to leave. Some people, you ah, well, you can stay here for three months. No. That's an accident when it happened. Some of y'all got suckered into letting somebody move in your house. And God says, wait a minute. I got to break that down because you messed up. Some of you ladies, oh, I'm a single lady. Hold on. My husband has given me authority to talk to y'all just for a minute. I'm married. Oh, I'm a single lady. Where's swag at, Michelle? Oh, I'm a single lady. You better be. Let me tell you something. You better be sex. Listen. 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 This is for y'all. And then I'm going to get out of here and be sure to church tonight. You better not let that joker live in your house. What? How you going to let a man live in your house? Mess up your credit. Dry your car. Man, I had this woman come to my church. She said, I'm sorry I'm late for church. I'm like, you ain't got to tell me you're sorry for late for church. You use an adult. You ever got them passes? You got to call them and tell them you ain't coming to church. You got to call them and tell them I'm going out of town. If y'all don't get a life and be adults. And she said, I'm sorry, I'm not, you ain't gonna tell me you sorry, you late for church, you late, you late, I mean, I ain't mean for any, they got I call you pastor, I'm going out of town, I'm calling to town, what, it's control, I said, listen, listen here girl, she said, yeah, cause I had a fight with my man, I said, okay, it happens, she said, no, pastor, can I talk to you for a minute, yeah, you can talk to me for a minute, he took my car to go pick up his new girlfriend's daughter from daycare from 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 babysitting no from daycare and he didn't bring my car back i said let me get this right your bull took your car because he didn't have one to pick up his girlfriend's daughter from daycare and didn't bring it back she says yes and i'm like well you know i was like shenanigan like, you know, you know. and i was trying to get i was trying to think about what the heck did she just say to me in my office that doesn't make any sense. He doesn't have a car. She was like, no, he just took mine. I said, did you? She says, I still, I don't know where he is. I said, but you said the baby. She says, yeah, it's this, it's this girl he's seeing on the side. Child, it was a bunch of confusion. My head heard it. It did. I said, listen here. Y'all better stop letting these jokers use your car. If he ain't your husband, y'all giving these, you, <sighs> that's Michelle's job. That's not my job anymore. But some of y'all in some mess because you didn't scout the land, you didn't consider the foundation, you didn't consider the structure, you didn't consider none of that. You just went on your feelings, you moved them in, and now you can't get the joke out your house. Because he said, I ain't going nowhere, my mail come here. As long as my mail, I went to, I had one joker tell me, as long as my mail is coming here, I will always, and, and then take care of you, your kids, your mama, your grandma. I don't care what it said, you got to get up out my house, son. 
Stop letting these jokers exercise their squatters' rights, ladies. Now, that's the sidebar for my girls, but back to the message. And, girl, y'all laughing. 3,400 people in the sound of my voice. God said, now I got to break all that down. Because you was in your feelings. I even... <laughs> I even had one girl say she wasn't even married to this guy and his his children, all four of them was living in her house. And the mother of the four children, his ex-wife, was across town. She just moved into her new house with a new man. And he off party and she stuck there taking care of his four kids. Confusion is of the devil. And God said, now, you see all these bad choices you make because you don't scout the land before you build? And God said, now nah, I got to break all that down. So I've got to send brokenness to bless you. And some of you, yeah, yeah, that's right, Evie. It's an entanglement. Some of you are in an entangle. And in order for God to, in, to untangle the entanglement, he got to break the cord. You ever try to get a necklace? I got a whole bunch of necklaces. Stop laughing at me, Wes. I got a whole, I'll be like, Fred, 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 Fred. And then he entangles them. And sometimes I just be like, man, psh, and I just pop it. Never mind, it's useless. And God says, you in an entanglement. I'm trying to get you untangled, so I've got to break the rope. 3,500 people under the sound of this prophetic word. God said, I sent that brokenness. Because now i got to bless you. Her brain was over vacation. Understand that God said, I'm rebuilding. It's the seed to rebuild. Because he says, even the grains. He said, I'm going to go and you're going to gather now. And he said, but i got to break that up first. I am Pastor Jamila Young. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Say it with me. I am Pastor Jamila Young Gooden. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this openly. I am no longer a Mitchell. See how I got rid of confusion? So please stop inboxing me. And please stop putting that in my post. I am no longer Jamila Mitchell. God broke that down. And now you've seen the rebuilding. And it's great. I am Pastor Jamila Young Gooden. See how I did that? You see how I just dispel all rumors and lies? I don't mind doing it because I ain't scared. Bless you.